How you doing? Good. You remember talking to me earlier? Yes. I'm Dan. Listen, do you want you want some water or anything? You doing all right? Don't worry. You don't want anything? Just water. You do want some water? Yes, please. Okay. Let me get you some water. I'll be right back. Thank you. I want, to, I want to kind of talk to you about what's going on with this, okay? And I've been involved with this case from the beginning, okay? And I've seen everything that we have. I've seen all the interviews. And at this point, I know we've come in and we talk to you over and over and over again. We've talked to you in Raleigh. We've talked to you here. And we've always talked about the past. What happened that night? What happened that night? What happened that night? What I want to do is I want to kind of talk to you about the future where we're going from here, okay? Now, I'm, you, you've already heard about all the stuff that we got. I mean, there's no question about what happened that night. We know that it's more than you're telling us. We know that you were involved with, with her death. We know that, okay? So the question is not what happened or anything like that. What we need to understand is going forward, okay, there's going to be a trial. Okay, there's going to be uh, press, there's going to be everybody looking at this. You've seen how these things, they get huge. The media gets involved and everybody's going to have an opinion about what happened. And everybody's going to have an opinion about you and your relationship and what kind of person you are. Okay, mm -hmm. and the thing that, that we're trying to do is, I, I mean, I talked to you earlier, you're a nice guy. I like you. I mean, I think we could be friends, you know, in different circumstances. But here's the thing, you know, there's going to be two narratives going forward, okay? And what I want to do is try to give you the opportunity to kind of tell me more about what narrative actually happened, okay? So what, what we're looking at is, you know, there, there's the one option, okay? And that's the option that you were kind of getting from earlier when, when Tom was in here, which is, you know, you planned this? You came down here with the intent purpose to, to hurt Trisha? That you were going to, that you planned to ditch her car here in some calculated way and you plan to go put her in a certain place that she, nobody could find her and all that kind of stuff. And and that sounds pretty bad, right? I mean, that's, I mean you wouldn't agree with that, no. okay? Now, the, the other alternative is that, and like I said, we, we know what happened. We know that, you know, that something beyond what you were telling us happened in the house. But I think the more likely story is having seen, I mean, trust me, I've been here, you haven't seen me before involved in this, but I've seen you, okay, I've done a lot of research in your background, and I know what it was like with Trisha, I know what kind of stuff you went through, I know she had a wild streak when she was younger, I know what she did, and she came after you, you know, in that, that domestic thing that happened before, I know how that started, okay, we've seen the reports, we know how it all happened, we know she went back and said no, the whole thing was made up, because she started, okay, what I think is a more, to me, having known you, having known the background of everything between you and her, everybody's going to have their own opinion. But I, I can see that I think probably what happened was something more like she started something that night. Okay? And, uh, you know, having known what her background was, having known how she treats you, okay, I've seen text messages. I've seen how, what she says to you, okay? I know what kind of stuff she always bitching you about stuff. I get that. I see that. Okay. So I could see how that would kind of go that direction that night. All right. So what I want to do is try to try to set the set the stage so that you can actually tell the narrative about what actually happened, which is not that you planned all this. Okay. Not that you planned down here to come down here and kill her and send her out into the woods like some sort of mass murderer. I mean, really? I mean, like, like you're going to chop her up in little bits or something like that? I mean, that, that seems kind of ridiculous, okay? It seems far-fetched, like you said, okay? And I don't think you planned all this, 
I don't think you're capable of that. Okay? I think what happens is sometimes things just get out of hand. Okay? You agree with that? Sometimes, you know, people start doing something and, and they cause something to happen. Okay? And I'm not saying you wanted this to happen. All right? But I know you were there when it happened. Okay? What we want to understand is what actually happened that night. Okay? And I know you were there. And I know, I don't believe it was your fault. Okay? So what I imagine something to be, you know, is maybe you guys got in an argument. Maybe it was over the computer. Maybe it was over the gas. Maybe it was over whatever. Okay? Any little nitpicky thing that she's going to get on you about, which she always did. I get that. Okay? And things got heated. Okay? You're down here to try to see your daughter. Okay? You're a good dad. You're trying to be down here to spend time with, with somebody that you care about, your daughter. And Trisha's here again, you know, and unfortunately, you know, Faith wants to see Trisha, and Faith is calling for Trisha. I'm sure that doesn't make you feel that good. She's, been, she's trying to spend time with your daughter, okay? Okay. okay. But, but it's, you know, and Trisha came over, but then things started getting kind of ugly, okay? And I'm sure she started it. And you didn't want to get involved in that, okay? But if she starts pushing things, she's not going to back up. She, she's, she's unrelenting, okay? I've, I've seen this, okay? I've seen the history. I've seen the background of how this works, okay? So what, what I could see happening is maybe she came at you and, I mean, just defending yourself, she falls. Maybe um, you, you didn't realize how hard you pushed her out of the way, but you're just trying to defend yourself. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you tried to hurt her, but I'm saying that it's clear that something happened there and that resulted in Trisha getting injured to the point where she, where she was deceased, okay? And then beyond that, I can see, you know, putting myself in your shoes for a minute, okay? I see that you're, you're a hard worker, okay? You've, you've Rose to the ranks. You're in the Air Force. You've been there, what, 11, 12 years, you said? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a long time. That's a career. You devoted your life to, to that career, to this country. Okay. You've got your daughter to think about. Okay. Something happened. It's Trisha's own fault. Now she's gone. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. But what are you going to do about faith? And like you said, people aren't going to believe that, that you weren't, you know, planning to do this. People aren't going to believe that you weren't intending to hurt her in some way. But sometimes shit just happens. And now here it is. So now you've got to make a choice. Okay? Do you call the cops and roll the dice that we're going to believe your story? Or do you try to do the, you, you go into a little bit of panic mode. And trust me, if I was in the same, I don't know what I would have done. Okay? I couldn't even imagine being in that position. But I can understand going into that, that panic mode of, holy shit, what do I need to do now? And... So your first plan, I mean, you told us that your plan was that you were just going to take her back to the house and you were going to leave her there, which I understand because she's going to be back by her house and people are going to find her and, you know, then maybe, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll look other where, other places, you know what I mean? And, and I understand that, okay? And that's what you told us. That was, that was kind of your first thought. But that's probably when you saw that Joshua was still home. So, and... and now, you're not going to run the risk of him coming out when, when this is all going on because, I mean, that's, that's not going to look well for you at all, right? I mean, if Joshua comes out and sees all this, he's not going to understand. He's obviously going to think that you planned this and did this intentionally. So, so now we're going to go back to the house, okay? And, of course, Trisha, being the way she is, there's no gas in the car. Typical Trisha. And I keep it. I mean, come on. I mean, how, how much... How hard is it to go fill up a gas tank? I mean, really? It's not that hard. It's not that hard. you got to think ahead about this type of stuff. I never let my gas, my gas tank go below a quarter of a tank. That's me, you know? But I pay attention to that stuff. My wife, she'll run that gas tank out all the time. And then I thing, you know, i got to go out in the middle of the night because i got to run and get groceries or something. I'm also getting gas because she didn't think ahead about it. Okay. So, so now... Well, obviously, you can't go to the gas tank, the gas station in her car because she's in the car. I mean, that's, that's not going to look good, right? So you head back to the house, and you, the only thing you can think of is, is hopefully somebody has some gas there, right? And we, we confirm that. We talk to everybody. 
And yeah, you did. You tried to get some gas at the house. And then you decide that you're just going to have to go get gas. But now you're going to take your own car, obviously, because you don't want to be in her car. So, I mean, that's all confirmed. And that, and that makes perfect sense. Okay. So, and then now you're going to have to go to plan B, which is, unfortunately, you're going to have to take her somewhere else because you can't risk somebody seeing you with, with her in the car. Right? Because that's going to be too hard to explain. And it is. And now we're in this position. It's very difficult to explain, and I get that. But what we need to do is, is moving forward, I mean, is, is, and like I said, there's, there's these two narratives, okay? We need to understand now what happened because we, we're going to write reports about this. This is all on video. This is all going to go forward into this trial. This is inevitable. We, I can't change this at this point. This is, a roll, this is a boulder rolling down a hill, okay? The only thing I can do is alter the course slightly. And the only thing that I can do at this point, and like I said, I think you're a good guy. I've talked to you. You're a nice guy, okay? I don't think that you were a cold-blooded killer who came down here with the explicit intention to murder her, okay? I don't think that's the case, okay? But right now, I, I can't say otherwise. I can't say that there was an accident because you're not telling us something other than that, okay? We have all this evidence, and then we also have things that are not consistent, okay? We're having inconsistencies where there's still holes. Even after all of this, there's still holes in the story that we can prove through evidence that what you're telling us is not completely true. And that continues to make it look like even having understanding that this, this has happened and it was out of your control and we know what happened, you're still trying to tell us little lies about what happened so that it makes you look better. And unfortunately, that's, that's not going to help you because any lie at this point is going to make you look bad. And it's going to tip that boulder right back to the, everybody thinking, oh, well, he's a liar. He's a cold-blooded murderer. He came down here to kill her. And they're going to put you on, you know, like these posters with all these, you know, serial killers and stuff like that. That's not where you need to be, okay? Sometimes people just make mistakes. Sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes things get out of control. And that's understandable, but you have to tell us that story. We have to understand what happened so that we can tell that story. Because once, I, once we're done here, we don't make any more recordings. We don't write more reports. Once I put in my report, whatever happened, that's, that's set in stone because that's what you told me. Whatever your words are, that's what, we can, that's what we take to court. That's going forward, what you told us about what happened. That's what you told us uh, the truth was. Okay, and if we come back and show that, hey, that's not the actual truth, then again, that just looks horrible for you, and that starts telling that other narrative. All right, so I think that you were there when she was injured, and that she was injured in some way that was not a direct attack from you, but I think that you have more information about what actually happened to her. Because I know you were in the house with her when it happened. Is that true? No. Okay. No. Listen, we, I know, and you tell me that, okay? And you're using very specific language. So tell me, I'm not saying that you laid a hand on her, but I know that you were there when she was injured. So you need to explain to us how it was she, be, she became injured because, because this whole thing where you came back from the gas station and you just found her like that, I know that's not true. I, and I can prove that's not true. Okay? And I don't want that for you. I don't want you to be locked into this story where you're telling us a lie about how she became injured. Because if you lie about how she became injured to me right now, then that makes it look like you did it on purpose. Of course not. And, well, and that's not the story that I want to tell. Okay? And I want you to be able to tell the story about what actually happened and for the truth to get out there. The only thing that's going to help you at this point is the truth. And, and I know that the truth is not that you came home and you found her after you went to go get gas for her. I know that's not the truth. Okay? And I need you to tell us the truth so that I can tell the actual truth when we go to court. Because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to find out the truth about what happened. I'm not, I'm not here to try you. I'm not a jury. I'm not a judge. I'm not a, a lawyer. Okay? I'm a detective. A detective's my sole job is to find the truth about what happened. Because once I'm done with my job, I can write the truth in my report, and I can be satisfied that I understand the entire truth. But if there's something that doesn't add up, if 
there's something that I know to be a lie, I have to keep digging at it. I keep digging at it and keep digging at it. And I have to bring that up in court because they're going to ask me, is this the whole truth? Is this what actually happened? And I'm going to have to say, I have evidence contrary to that. I know that that's not what happened. And I know he's lying. Okay? But the only person who is in that house who can tell us what happened to Tricia is you. Because Faith obviously can't tell us what happened. But if you don't tell us the truth about what happened, it just continues to make it look like you're lying to us to cover up something more sinister, for lack of a better word. Like, you intended this to happen, and now you're covering it up. And I don't want that to be the story. It's not the story. And I know. And that's why I want you to have this opportunity to tell me the, the truth about how she became injured, how, that, how Trisha lost her life. Yeah, you, you, you do. You do. You do. Okay? And I know that you were in the house. Like I said, I can, I can prove. But I didn't do anything to her. And I, you're not, you're not hearing me. Okay, you're not hearing me. Okay? I'm not saying that you did anything to her on purpose. I'm not saying that you hurt her. I'm not saying that you laid hands on her. Okay? But I do know that you know what happened to her. I know that you know what happened to her. I know you were in, I know you were in the house. I know it, okay, and I can prove that. And I don't want to have to get up on the court and the, and on the on the jury in the in the stand and explain to the jury that even after giving the opportunity to tell me the truth about what happened, to, to tell me the truth that you're not this cold-blooded murderer who came down here to kill her. I would never do that. It, you can tell me that, but you continue to tell me a lie about what happened. You continue to tell me a lie about how you found her dead how she came to be injured like that. You, and I know I don't want that to be the last thing that we hear about this. I don't want the last thing that you're able to tell us is this lie about how she got hurt because that is the most important piece of this. There's no question that she was killed. There's no question that she was taken out into the, the woods. But the problem is that the narrative is, was that the actions of someone who was panicking and a jury could yes. completely understand this? I did. I didn't know what to do. I but, don't, I don't so, plan these So explain things. to I me. I, how, I don't know what you do in these situations. And I know you didn't plan this. And that's exactly what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to give you the opportunity to explain to us how it happened that it, because it was not planned. You did not no. attack her. You did no. not try Never. to kill her or try to come down here to kill her. Never. But things happen. And I, we need to understand what it was that happened in that house before the whole gas thing. I know it happened before the gas thing. I know it, it happened before you went to the, this computer thing. I, I know that's not the truth. I can, I can prove that this is not the truth. I need to know the truth to, to be able to tell people that, that you're not a serial killer, that you're no, some not. psychopath who has no remorse over killing the mother of your child. But you know that's what's going to be in the paper. You know that's I what's going to change that. You can. You can change that. You can change that right now. No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can't tell you anything other than what I've told you. No, you can tell and, me the truth. And that's the problem. And nothing, I, nothing, nothing makes it better. Nothing I say makes this better. It, it will. And it because, doesn't matter. Because there's a huge difference between we got an argument, it got physical, she started it, she got hurt. And that's not that's, that's, any better. That's, that's no, no better. No, tell me. the same scenario. That she is miles, it. that is miles better than I came down here with a backpack, with a backpack full of tools ready to kill her and drag her out and her lifeless body into the woods. It was just clothes. It was just the clothes that didn't You heard, you heard the narrative that you told. You told to, you told us more I had a bag, I had clothes, yes. I had water, yes, I had not snacks. already in there. Well, no. no, I'm saying you got the bag, and then after all this is done, all this messy business is finished. Now you get rid of that. That looks awful. I know, that looks I like that looks like that. a murder bag. That looks like oh my gosh, she but came down here what with was. this bag, and I don't think it was. What? I think it was just a bag it, that you had it with some stuff in it. Yes, that's but you literally need, what it was. Just but you need to explain stuff that I already had. But if that's the case, you need to explain the how she got hurt. Okay, now, and I listen to me. I know, I know this is my job. Okay, 
I know when I when the truth is coming out, and I know when somebody's trying to dance around the truth, and I know when somebody's trying to skip over things. Okay, and I know that's what's happening here, and I don't blame you because it's scary, because you don't want to have to think about what happened again, and because you think it's good.